How to Build a Rust Application Using Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.375.1. And attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has Rust installed on it. Now, when I went to install Rust, I found that the package managers had older versions of Rust. So in order to install the latest version of Rust, I took the standalone installer from Rust. And how I found that is I started at rustlang.org, clicked on install, ignored everything about Rust up, which is probably the best way to do things. I clicked on the other installation methods about learn more. And then I went ahead and scrolled down to the section called standalone installers. And then I found the stable version of the installer for my platform, downloaded that, and then installed it onto that agent. There's also a sample repository for this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. And let's go ahead and take a look at this repository. If you're familiar with Rust, this is going to look familiar to you. The basis of this repository was created by doing cargo new hello. And it gave me a handful of files. First off, it gave me a cargo tomo file. It also gave me a source directory that had main RS in it, which then outputs hello world. Now, if we go back over to our cargo tomo file, what we're going to see is as cargo is run, cargo, if you're not familiar with it, is much like Maven or Gradle in the Java ecosystem. So it's our build tool for Rust. When it builds this application, it's going to create a binary called hello. But what if you don't want to use cargo immediately? What if you want to just use Rust C? Well, in this example repository, I have two different Jenkins files, one for Rust C and one for cargo. Now in real life, you would use cargo, but I have an example for Rust C. So we take a look at Rust C. The first thing that we're wanting to do is to make sure that Rust C is correctly installed. And then from there, we're going to run Rust C against source main RS, and then I can run dot slash main. Now notice that it's main as the binary and not hello. That's because we're not using cargo to do the build this time. We're using Rust C to do the build. That's why the name is main. So let's go over to our controller. I already have these jobs set up. So I have Rust C and cargo. So we'll look at Rust C first. So we'll click into Rust C, click on build now. When we take a look at the output for Rust C, what we're going to see is first the verification for Rust C. When we did the installation the other day, the value for Rust should be 1.66.0 because that's the binary that we downloaded and installed. We can see here when we take a look back at it, it is 166.0. We compile source main RS and then we run dot slash main and we get the output of hello world, which is what we saw over in our definition for source main RS. There's our hello world. Now we've also defined a Jenkins file for you running cargo. So let's go take a look at that. So we'll look at Jenkins file cargo. Again, because we're using cargo to do the build, instead of explicitly calling Rust C, we'll just call cargo. So first off, we'll verify cargo is correctly installed. We'll do our compile. Then we're going to manually run that binary that's created, because when this binary is created by default, it's going to be in target debug, and the name of the file will be hello but we can also run the binary that's created using cargo. We can just say cargo run because it will use the cargo tomo to find the file to run. So verify the version of cargo is installed. We'll do a cargo build. Then we'll manually run the binary and then we'll just use cargo to run the binary. So let's go back over to our Jenkins controller, click on cargo and click on build now. And what we'll see from this output is we'll see cargo version 166.0. We'll do our cargo build. We manually run target debug hello, we get hello world. And then we also run cargo run, which is using cargo tomo, which knows to go find the hello binary. And then we also see the output again, hello world. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.